Hello, my awesome math students. I hope everyone's doing well today. We're gonna to have a really nice short presentation today, just a review of the last three topics that we've covered. So we've got some distributive property, combining like terms, a little bit of order of operations. Today, we're gonna to do three problems together, and they are problems that are right from the worksheet where your practice problems are. So I'm gonna ask you to write these three down as notes, but they'll also be part of your practice. So it'll be less work for you to do later. Um, and remember, if you can't write as quickly as I can, pause the video, get caught up, start it up again. So here's the first one. This is number 10 from the worksheet. I know you're not looking at the worksheet yet. You can just write it down in your notebook with the number 10. I picked this one in particular because of that sign right there. I know that a subtraction is not a really big deal for us, but I have to remember what I'm actually distributing here. I do have parentheses. I've got a number in front of the parentheses, which happens to be a fraction, everybody's favorite, but I'm not just distributing just three fourths. It's actually gonna be negative three fourths that's distributing. Now, there's no other subtractions that have to do with keep change change. Everything else I can see if it's a negative already or if it's just an addition, so it's positive. Remember, we are not combining these two first because the distribution, that negative three-fourths, is getting multiplied by some stuff. And order of operations says, I have to do that multiplication, that distribution, first. So I haven't done anything with my seven yet. I'm going to write it down. Plus negative three-fourths times negative eight X. Well, I know there's going to be an X there. Remember, you can use your calculator. If you know how to type in negative three-fourths, great. If you know that negative three-fourths is actually negative 0.75, fine, use that. I'm gonna show you how to do it. I have another shortcut that I'll do in another problem with you, but if I have a negative three-fourths times a negative eight, I'm gonna make it negative eight over one. The negative times a negative means it's gonna be positive. Easy. The four in the denominator right here, and this eight up here in this numerator, I can simplify those. I can divide them both by four. So that's going to turn into a one, and that'll turn into a two. Now on the top, remember I already said it was going to be positive, so three times two is six. The denominator is just one. Six over one, I don't need that one there. I can just ignore that part, and it's just a six. So when I distribute right here, this is actually going to be a positive six x. Now negative three-fourths times a positive 20. Those are different signs. I know that's going to be negative. In fact, I would even put, put in my plus and negative right now. You can do, I'm just going to leave it as a positive because I know that my answer is going to be a negative in my, in my final step here. You can do this just the way that I just did. Or here's my shortcut. One-fourth of 20 is like taking 20 divided by 4. That's going to be 5. So three-fourths of 20 would be three times as much. That's going to be 15. If that made sense to you, great. If not, that's okay. Use your calculator or show the work here. Divide by 4, divide by 4. 3 times 5 is going to be 15. So this is just plus a negative 15 right here. Now, I've got some like terms. The 6x is going to go first because that's how we write those kind of problems. The variables go first. But I've got a positive 7 and a negative 15. And that's going to give me a negative 8. That's not what the answer is going to look like on the worksheet. It's going to look like this. Personally, I don't care which one you write. You do not need to rewrite that first answer to give me the second answer as long as you understand that they're the same thing. This one doesn't have any fractions, but again, I was concerned. I, I see this as a big issue. Think about what you're really distributing. You're really going to be distributing this right here, and it's not a positive 8. It is going to be a negative 8. Here's another thing that I'm really worried about. I think that some people are going to see this 8 minus 8 and say, oh, that's 0. Mm, but remember, that 8, actually negative 8, is going to be distributed, which is multiplying. Got to do that before adding and subtracting. So I'm going to do a keep change change right there. I'm going to do the same thing in here. Now, the negative 3a, I didn't do anything with that. I just want to rewrite it. Rewrite the 8. Negative 8 times 7 is going to be a negative 56. And negative 8 
times a negative 2a is going to be a positive 16a. Now, my a's match. I have a negative 3a and I have a positive 16a. They're different signs. So I'm going to, um, when I combine those like terms, I'm actually going to be subtracting to get a 13. And then we're more positive, so it is positive. There we go. That was number 15 on the worksheet. Just number it on your paper so you've got that for later. And here's the last one. Another one with fractions. I'm going to change colors this time. The thing that I'm distributing is already positive, so I don't have to worry about doing any changing for that. But this 2 thirds is going to be distributing. Um, nothing else can be combined before I take care of that distribution. So the negative 7a is going to stay. Plus 2 thirds of 12a. I know there's going to be an a. 1 third of 12. 12 divided by 3 is 4 times 2 would be 8. If you can do that in your head, great. This one, though, when you, if you do choose to use your calculator, do not try to change two-thirds into a decimal. Two-thirds as a decimal is 0.6 repeating. If you just use a 0.6, or even if you use a 0.667, or anything like that, it's not going to be exact. So 3 and 12 can both be divided by 3. So 2 times 4 is going to be 8. And I do have an A on that. Plus. And again, if you can do that math quickly in your head, that's going to be a 10, right? If you can't do that, that's okay. 2 thirds times 15, 2 thirds, 15 over 1, divide by 3, divide by 3. That's going to be 10. So minus 10 just carries along. All right, so we've got two sets of like terms, negative 7a plus 8a. Different signs, so we're subtracting. They're more positive, so it's going to be a positive. It's just going to be a 1a. All right, and then what happens here? Adding 10, subtracting 10, those two just cancel out. 1a is my answer. Again, that's not what it's going to look like in the answer key, though. They don't write the 1 in front of it. Okay, so that's three of the problems. This was number 24 on the worksheet. The practice problems that we want you to do for this large circus animals worksheet that you're going to see, <clears throat> I want you to either pick the evens or the odds. Doesn't matter, but show your work. And then remember to please, 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 please check your answers. Make sure that you're seeing if you're getting the right answers. It is a riddle worksheet. If you're only doing half the worksheet, you won't really get the whole riddle, but at least you'd be able to find your answers. So if you can't find your answers, you know that you're making some kind of a mistake. When you're all done with those practice problems, I want you to make sure that you take that learning check in Schoology. Um, I wrote problems that are just like the worksheet, so um, take your time on those, be careful with them, and let us know if you need any help. Have a great day.